painting is about the activity of making the painting and people look at the painting that you've made and that's the experience they have. But my experience is the experience of making the painting, of discovering this thing inside me that was sort of in a sense waiting to come out that I didn't know was there. And that's why I do it. That's what I'm interested in mainly. Christopher Brown is a painter. He lives and works in Berkeley and for a time taught at the University of California. As he works, he will constantly change a painting, adding, subtracting, reconfiguring almost intuitively. He is essentially a figurative artist, but in the past decade he has broken down ideas of scale and juxtaposition in his work. I think there's a certain kind of naive enthusiasm that comes through in my work, a certain kind of just blind optimism. And I think it's a strength of my work, and I think it's even a strength of me as a person. I think it's what's allowed me to be an artist in many ways. I think it begins with a kind of just general curiosity. I mean, like, why does any one of us like to do the things we do? Why do we go dancing? Or why do we choose to read these kinds of books? Like, for example, I love to play golf. The incredible greens, the richness of the greens that you don't find anywhere else because the grass is so well manicured and watered and colored, you know, with fertilizers. So you get this amazing color experience when you play golf. So what's going on here is the part that I'm interested in. I'm interested in this big circle. I mean, this is an interesting, to me, an interesting idea of this big circle. Like you're looking in, it's like looking in through a telescope, which emphasizes this idea of space. Like the, as you move into the circle, you're kind of going back and back and back, you know, which is a kind of an interesting visual idea. And then the, the conjunction of these three things, which are in such a different scale, right together, is a funny thing too, that sort of forces you in. It, kind of, it makes you read them flat and then spatially. So you're kind of continually going boom, 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 like an accordion. For 30 years, Chris has explored a changing collection of very simple images that repeat in his paintings. Many are saved as photographs, but most come from memory. In that time, he has patiently created a significant body of work. Interest in my work come and go over time. Um, as I say, I'm interested in a lot of different things. At one point, as an example, I got interested in Civil War photography. And when I started teaching at UC Berkeley, I went to the library and looked these books up. And I started looking at Civil War photography. And I, I made a kind of casual study of it for about eight years, and after about eight years, it actually started appearing in my paintings. It's a pretty amazing bird, really. The color and everything is pretty spectacular. As a kid, I was fascinated by nature. You know, I mean, we, I grew up living in near woods, fields, lakes. I, we lived out on the edge of town, and so our playground, so to speak, was just going out into the woods and the fields. I would look for bird nests and I would I learned to identify different kinds of birds as a, as a kid and I would be able to identify their nests and their eggs and I really got into all that stuff. I can remember when I was a little kid, I would go stay with my grandmother's house and there were train tracks not far from there and I like that, waking up in the night and hearing the trains near her house. So I've always, for example, been interested in images like trains and horses and people. These things that we all see and experience all the time. A writer friend of mine says, you know, there's no new stories in life. There's simply new experiences of people living in the present. You know, there's particular new ways of telling old stories. And I think to some degree the same thing is true with painting. There are no new images in the world, exactly. So in a sense, I'm taking the oldest images and I'm just sort of rearranging them in, a, in a, what I hope is a personal way. Chris is working towards a new show at the John Bergruen Gallery. John has shown up with a collector for an early look at the work. Tell me a little bit about this one. This is called Me and Marie. It's a painting of, of me and my girlfriend Marie. I just sort of painted it from memory. Originally, she was sitting in a convertible, and in this painting you can see the very top edge of the back of the car, right there. And I was actually standing next to the car, and then I just didn't feel like the space of it worked, so I just revamped it. In the mid-90s, Chris decided he needed a change and moved away from the Bay Area. I started teaching in Berkeley in 1981, and by 1993, I had decided I'd had about enough. 
So I went to New York with the intention that I was going to live there for a year, and I ended up staying two years. Um, but at the end of two years, too, I thought, enough of that. I really had had my fill of New York, and I thought, this is not where I want to be. I didn't really want to be in the commercial center of the art world, because that's really what it seemed to me to be. It didn't seem to be the artistic center of the art world. It seemed to be the commercial center of the art world. And so this is sort of making a tree into a building or a building into a tree. And these would be leaves and then this kind of moving. The gallery show will open in a month. Chris will work on the large painting of the building daily until then. It will be the centerpiece of the show. He will change it almost continuously. The whole experience of buildings for me is this experience of enormous scale. So to take this very large canvas and paint a building on it was an exciting idea. And one of the things that seems to happen to me that I'm aware of in my paintings is that I need to create an, a real rich experience of place in the painting, a sense of space and a sense of place in the painting. I find myself having spent a couple of months just painting and repainting the windows, changing the perspective, changing the color. I think I've changed the color of the painting completely 10 times so far. And I've redrawn the windows four different times completely, trying to get the sense of scale and space correct. Um, I'm thinking of putting a big looping train right over top of this. And so I'm just wanting to kind of get an idea of maybe how big it would be. <laughs> well, as I worked on the painting, I think after we last saw it, I started to put the train in. And I got it part way in and then decided that the color of the painting wasn't working. And so as you can see, I started painting things out white this kind of creamy white. And most of the painting got painted cr this kind of creamy white color. And then, then it really, everything kind of got revised. And I started going back in with sections brown and I decided that it couldn't really be one color or the other. It had to be a kind of a combination. And so once I did that, then I put this figure in. I started putting these horses in. And so there was all of it, trains, horses, different colors. And I kind of liked the excitement of it. But then as it built more, I added more horses and sort of filled out the figure a little bit, and it kind of came to this point, and time was up, and here it is. <laughs> so. Hello, how are you? The opening at the John Bergruen Gallery in San Francisco was filled with friends, old and new. I was still painting on this the morning, like at 9.30, the truck came at 10. <laughs> in the life of a painter, an opening is a momentary social evening in an otherwise solitary life. I'm always sort of shocked when I go into a gallery when I have a show and I see what my paintings look like. I'm always surprised to the degree to which my paintings just simply reveal to me in a very open way just who I am. I look at them and I think, wow, they're more me than I really think of myself as being. And that's a funny thing to say about oneself, you know? Look at this, it's a hand-painted necktie by me. One of the things that's interesting about painting is that it's recording not only what you think and what you do, but it's recording your attitude in the making as well. It records your confidence, it record, records your sense of fear, it records your uptightness, your open-mindedness, your playfulness. All these things are recorded. You can almost plot the experience on a graph. You know, it's, you, you start out a painting with a lot of hopefulness and optimism, and then you kind of hit the first snag where it doesn't quite work out the way you thought it was going to work out. And so then you start to make a change, and as soon as you start to make a change, the painting a lot of times immediately goes downhill. And then when it goes downhill, you keep trying to save it. There's a sense like, maybe it's not so bad. What happens is you kind of get to a rock bottom where finally when you accept that that's where you are, you have the chance to take what you've got and sort of start over with it, to re-see it in a sense and see its potential outside of where you started from. Like you've made this image, it didn't work out, but you can say, oh, that's interesting, but it's not interesting for the reason that I began with it. I could see now how I could change it into this and add this to it, it could become this other thing. So then you do that and then you start back up the mountain and it gets exciting again. 
And that will happen over and over, like three, four, ten times in a painting. And finally you get to the point where the painting is related to your original idea, but very different in its final result. It's, it's a, on one hand a purely visual experience, but on the other it's an emotional experience. You've been to that land before, you know, and you know when you've gotten there again and it's not fake. You can't fake it. That's what it's about. It's about the exhilaration. It's about the exhilaration of discovery. And, and that's what I'm after every time in here. And you come in here every day with the optimism that, hey, today could be a day. It's usually not, but it could be. <laughs>